So you had a really interesting take on this. Tell us about the coloring. Why is that a big deal? Well, um, all the T-38s were normally white. And when I flew them at Beale, and I actually flew this tail number at Beale four times <laughs> during my career, uh, they were used um, to give extra flying time to uh, U-2 pilots, SR-71 pilots, uh, tanker co-pilots uh, weren't getting enough flying time, so they let us check out again. We flew these in pilot training, then they got a bunch of them at Beale, and uh, SAC owned those, Strategic Air Command owned those birds, uh, which, who owned this one. So I flew this tail number, and eventually, uh, in the 90s, they decided to get rid of the SR-71, and the SR-71s were black with red markings, uh, after those were, were removed from the inventory, they still had U-2s there. The commander, I guess, was nostalgic for the look of the SR-71. So all of the birds that belonged to SAC got painted black with red markings, which is a very difficult color to take good care of. Uh, as anybody knows, that's never had a black car. <laughs> yes. So um, this one, when I flew it, was white. and. Uh, I think we might, uh, when they repaint this one, I might convince the curator that maybe we should go back to the white markings. I have photographs of this airplane and the planes that, there were 16 T-38s there and I flew all of them. Wow. I only flew this one four times. Uh, tell I, us about that, you have kept all of your logbook. You're sitting on your fifth one? I'm on my fifth logbook, yeah, and I've flown over 10,000 sorties uh, in, my, in my career. Wow. Um, and I, right now I have 11,500 flight hours. I'm not currently flying. I was flying at the skydiving school in Madeira, but COVID uh, injured me bad enough that I've been struggling to get my medical back, but I still help run the drop zone. I'm still the chief pilot there. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had an interesting career. I flew seven different military planes. I've flown 30, 31 different civilian planes, but I did I did volunteer to be the crew chief on this one because I recognized the tail number. As soon as I saw it I, and saw that it was from Beale, I got my logbook out and sure enough, I found the tail number. That is so cool. Four times. So and this is one of the fun ones, right? This was a fun one. This is a little rocket ship. <laughs> it's, like, it's like strapping on a couple of jet engines with afterburners. The, the engines on that, this was a very light aircraft. This was the very first supersonic trainer. Really, okay. All of the trainers prior to that were subsonic. Uh, this was built in 61. Uh, this particular one wasn't. This is a, uh, I can't remember what year they built this one. Um, they were built from 61 to 72. They built 1,130 of them. Um, some of the foreign countries also used them. They were in Germany. Um, they were in Portugal. They've been in several countries. Taiwan had some. Right now, uh, out of all of those airplanes, they have mothballed some of them, taken them out of service. There were 200 accidents, so out of the 1,128, they crashed uh, 200 of them. Uh, that's worldwide. That wasn't all for right, the Air right. Force. Uh, they've mothballed quite a few of them. Right now, there's only 500 of these still being used by the Air Force for pilot training. There is a follow-on airplane that they're going to replace it with. But they upgraded. This is what's called an A model. Okay. There was a B model that had um, a gun sight and some other things that was used for air combat training. Uh, there weren't very many of those. Those were normally at Holloman Air Force Base, uh, what they call fighter lead-in. Uh, now they're called C models because they took all of the old instruments out and it's all a glass cockpit. It's all a modern glass right. cockpit like you'd find in the F-16 or, right, or right. follow-on birds. But they still fly them and they, I think they were supposed to upgrade the engines too, I don't know. The engines themselves were 2,850 pounds of thrust each without afterburner. With afterburner, they were close to 3,700, actually almost 3,800 pounds each. Because the airplane's so light, that's how you get it to break the sound barrier. It's not a lot of thrust compared to a, a modern fighter. And it's just you in there, right? No, there was you there's... and there's a back cockpit. Oh, okay. So because it was a trainer, the instructor would normally be in the back and you would sit in oh, the Oh, that front. makes sense. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, at Beal, uh, when we flew them at Beal, of course, you learn to fly formation. Uh, we become many Thunderbird <laughs> pilots uh, who are outstanding pilots, by the way, and we were nowhere near their caliber. But we would learn to fly instruments. We'd learn to fly formation. You'd learn to do aerobatics. 
Wow. And it, and it would go Mach 1.3. Uh, it would go pretty fast, but what's interesting is, is they were always worried about sonic booms, and so you weren't allowed to break the sound barrier down low. You were always up high. Well, if you're up at 30,000 feet, you can't tell how fast you're going, except the Mach meter says, oh, I'm going faster than the speed of sound. Um, wow. That's what I think. It's kind of like a car. When you get a car with power, you just, you know, it's, you have to train yourself how not it was, to drive it was so hard fast. To, it was hard to tell. Uh, you, could, you could hear the shock wave come up over the canopy. Uh, you could normally hear the sound would change when you wow. would go supersonic. But, but because they're so light, um, that's why they could go so fast. They were fun to fly. They do consume a lot of fuel. The fuel is all in the fuselage, not in the wings. Um, so how so long did you, can you go on this one? We, before would, we would average about 1.5 hours. Just an hour and a half. Oh, that's, you could that you really did have to. If you <laughs> if you left it an afterburner, you were only going to fly about 20 minutes because it consumed the fuel. Wow. So fast. Okay. But it was a great thing to learn on uh, because it prepared you then for the follow-on fighters like the F4, um, the F106. Back in those days, eventually it prepares them for the F15, the F16, uh, the more modern fighters because you need to learn to have your brain think that fast. There were guys in pilot training who could fly the T-37, which is the little white one down here. That only went 250 knots. This goes 850 knots. So because of the transition, you, you had to learn to speed your thinking up. A lot of guys washed out. They could fly the tweet, but they couldn't fly this one. Wow. Because they just couldn't think fast enough to stay ahead of the airplane. That is impressive. It was a challenge. When this plane first came out, it set time to climb records uh, to 12,000 meters. Um, it could climb at 33,000 feet a minute. And it set a record, which took it away from the F-104 Starfighter. A month after this one broke that record, the F-4 you see right over there broke that time to climb and it became the fastest climber. And now the F-15 I think is still the fastest Climber. But this one did in 1961 set a time to climb record. The fastest that I was ever able to climb, I was trying to dodge a thunderstorm and I was trying to get up high enough to go over the top. I was trapped by a line of thunderstorms. And I was, I was solo cross country from Craig Air Force Base to Columbus, mm -hmm. Mississippi. And the thunderstorms had risen to about 10 to 15,000 feet. So I, these can go to 50,000. So I called the controller and said, hey, is it okay if I just pop over the top of this thunderstorm? <laughs> you have to get far enough above them that you don't get hail and stuff spewing out of the top. Right. You don't want to run into hail. So you want to clear them by above more than 5,000 feet, preferably 10,000 feet. He said, you're cleared unrestricted climb to 50,000 feet. So I lit both afterburners and I turned sideways so I could keep an eye on this thunderstorm because once I got high enough I was going to cross over the top. So I'm right next to this thunderstorm in Alabama. They grow fast there. Wow. I went full afterburner, climbed up. I had to be climbing 20,000 feet a minute. It was only going to take two minutes to get to 50,000 feet from where I was. That thunderstorm beat me to 50,000 feet. By the time I got up there, I looked over and I was even with the thunderstorm. Oh my goodness. And it kept going to 70,000 feet. And I just turned around and went home. And I told the controller, yeah, I'm just gonna go back to Craig. I'm, I'm done. I'm not gonna fight the thunderstorms today. <laughs> that, that was awesome. You tried, you gave it a good shot. I made it to 50,000 feet and I looked over and I go, hey, God, the thunderstorm beat me there. So yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> they had a lot of power. They did start to get old and tired after a while. Uh, this one, we didn't do it with this one, but one of the ones at Beale, we decided to go up to 50,000 feet and do endurance and just see how long we could keep one airborne. We stared air airborne for over two hours. Wow. And then we spiraled down. We were right over the base. Well, they chewed us out because they, they didn't know we were going to do that. And they, because the normal <laughs> sortie length was an hour and a half, they thought we'd crash somewhere. They said, oh, where have you, where have you guys, goodness. where have you guys been? Well, we've been right over the field at 50,000 feet. Well, you got to tell us next time. We thought you guys had crashed. So they were fun airplanes. Um, I have ridden in an F-16 before when I was at the Air Guard in Fresno. I was able to get some rides and that's a more phenomenal airplane than this one. That one could accelerate straight up and darn near break the sound barrier straight up. This one, uh, you had to be in level flight. There and were... Do you know where this one came from? Because you flew it four times, but where did we get this one when it came to Castle? 
Well, this came from Beale. This was at Beale Air Force okay. Base. So this one's still owned by, was owned by the Strategic Air Command. So Strategic Air Command said, hey, uh, we want birds that we own. So normally, uh, all of that whole program was, was tanker-wide. Tanker co-pilots could fly T-38s. Those belonged to Air Training Command. SAC said, no, 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 we own these birds. So all of these had SAC emblems, Okay. and they, they came to SAC. And like I say, I flew 16 of them, and I think that's all there were was 16. But they were, you would just go to the scheduler and check one out, and you had to... You had to see if one was available because the U-2 pilots would fly and the SR pilots and all of the tanker co-pilots were trying to jump into a T-38 for fun. We would fly them anywhere in the country um, and just for experience. And that was part of the uh, part of the problem then was in the 70s, the flying time had been cut way back and guys weren't getting good experience, especially the young, excuse me, the young guys. The problem was is that I was getting ready to upgrade to aircraft commander because I had a lot of time in the tanker. And they said, well, hey, you want to check out in a T-38? And I go, yeah. And he said, well, when you upgrade, you can't fly this anymore. And I went, I don't want to upgrade. So I stayed as a co-pilot as long as I could because we were getting to fly this. So I got to only fly it for two years uh, because they finally said, you got to upgrade, you're, you're grounded from this. And so I said, okay. Oh, man, that's funny. And when did this particular plane retire? Do you know when this one? I do not know, um, the curator will know when this one came. It's been here for several years, uh, but I don't know exactly what year this one came here. Uh, this is a 64 model. This was built in 64. Oh, wow. Uh, but they, they probably left Beale. I don't know if Joe knows. Uh, do you guys know when this bird came? 2016. 2016. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you for showing us this one. And remember, everyone, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.